Hi, this is Casey from Retroactive Arcade once again. Um, I'm going to do a quick video on how to put the marquee in some of our arcade cabinet kits, okay? So for our Origin arcades and our Bar Top arcades. Um, this video is also probably useful for somebody doing something at home and they want to see find a solution of making their own monitor bezel for these arcade machines. Now I'm going to do this one in a few different steps uh, for one reason and one reason only is the fact that we've changed our kits a little bit so anybody who buys our kits might get a kit in two separate ways. I've done a monitor mount uh, for the bar top itself um, prior but uh, this one here um, I'm going to show you the two different ways. It works both for our fat, our fat boy or bar top kits as well as our origin stand up arcade machines. So <clears throat> basically you start off with a one of two things. So you're going to get the Malenko mount, which is basically um, you just pop this in the groove that's cut and provided for you here. Um, and then what you do is you just screw your monitor in the four holes and you can adjust it side to side. You put that in there and then it'll allow you to bring your monitor up and down. Um, I'm going to show you where to put that bezel so it'll, it'll give you that groove and stuff and get some close ups on where that bezel is going to drop to. So what you're going to be looking for for position with this option as well as the option that if you buy one of our kits and you also buy an LCD monitor from us at the same time, uh, we'll cut you the actual monitor mount to fit it specifically so it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, there is a bit of uh, work that has to be done on the bar top if you go with this option. Uh, basically you slide it in. I've already drawn my lines on the side. Um, you're going to end up having to put some sort of cleats or 2x4 or something in there to screw the edges of this monitor mount to it. Um, I'm not going to show you specifically how to do it. I'll show you how, what it looks like when it's done uh, just to make this video go by a little bit faster because the whole point of this uh, video is going to be how to make that monitor bezel, where to measure, what to look for, and then what kind of paint and stuff like that that we use. So we'll go through that whole process. Um, if you're just looking for that in the end, then you can just fast forward over to the end and go from there. But uh, yeah, we're going to move forward and uh, we'll cut in and out of this to, to get this golden by a little bit quicker. Thanks. Okay, so now uh, since I moved on here, um, you want to make sure when you do this that you have your control panel put on, both on the Origin as well as any of our bar tops. Uh, I've mounted the monitor in here. You can see um, we usually put electrical tape or something on there because the uh, bezel that we're going to be putting in, we're going to be painting it from behind. So you don't want any of the screws, sharp edges or anything like that to scratch that paint off, uh, especially if you ever want to remove it. Sometimes uh, the reason why we do this is so that you can push up, pull it out and uh, wipe behind it because dust and stuff gets in there and that type of a thing. Um, so it's a lot, of, a lot easier of a mount the way I've just done it now than that Malenko mount thing that I was talking about. The Malenko mount gives you versatility if you don't know what type of monitor you're going to use. If you spend the extra couple bucks and you get a brand new LCD, especially from us with the open frame, uh, it just makes your life a lot easier. You can put it together in an hour or half hour versus having to mess with the Malenko mount and trying to measure it out and get it all working and, and uh, whatever. But it does give you that versatility if you don't know what kind of monitor you're going to use. Uh, I'm just going to show you in the back here what I did. So I just put in cleats and rails. Uh, they'll be added into your kit um, if you get the monitor that from us. If you don't and you go with the Malenko mount, you'll just get the Malenko mount and you'll get some L brackets to hold that Malenko mount into place. Um, other than that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm not going to go through too much of that there because um, you can see what's done there. We'll get into how we're going to do the actual bezel. So these, um, these plexi pieces come with it, like you can add them on to the kit themselves. So it'll be called the bezel and the marquee. So the marquee that goes up top is just plastic and then you can get a decal or whatever to put over top of that to go there and uh, everything's all good. So with these, uh, with these uh, plexi pieces, I'm trying to do it on an angle so you can see, so it's giving me a bit of grief. Um, there we go. When you're doing this here, you can just kind of pop it into place, get it nice and snug where you want to fit it. As you can see, it's a snug fit. Don't take the protective sheeting off just so then you can beat on it like I did a little bit there and not have to worry too, too much. Because um, if you do, 
and you take this off, you're going to scratch something and then you're kind of, you have to find a whole new piece of plexi. Okay, so the reason why I drive fit this like this, one, just to see, make sure I got it there. Actually, um, what I did when I, when I measured out my lines for my cleats, I actually had the plastic in place so that I could have this butt up right there because if you have a gap there, especially if you do a lit backlit marquee, that light's gonna shine down here and it's quite annoying and it just doesn't look as professional as, as you could do it. So I like to get it almost exact. That's why it was such a tight fit. Um, what I do here now is I take a pen and I just draw my line right where it adds up here and right at the console line there. So that basically gives me my measurement line so I can, I know exactly my opening on this. And then uh, what I do is um, I'll take the uh, plastic out, which is a lot easier to take out than it is to put it in. Uh, I'm going to put this on the table, but I'm going to show you before I do all that where to measure and how I measure. This is very rudimentary uh, for what I'm going to show you, depending on what you want to do. You can use a caliper. Um, you can use a piece of paper and cut it the way you want it so that you make sure your measurements are exact. But I'm just doing this as a quick reference. You can use any which way you want to measure this as, uh, to be exact uh, or more exact and precise uh, to make it fit. So basically, I just take <clears throat> I'll do something other than a measuring tape, but I'm just showing you that this is sitting here at about a one and an eighth, right? So I make sure it's one and an eighth all the way down. Yes, so if I measure my line from my line that I drew on my plexi, uh, it'll be one and an eighth. Then I'll go from the side to my edge of where the monitor is showing and go from there. Up here, that line that I drew up top, I mounted the monitor specifically so that the top edge of the monitor bezel was in line with the actual top of the um, top of the speaker mount, so that I, I won't actually have to uh, measure out the top of my monitor. I'm just going to cut along the line that I drew right there. So basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually measure it out. I'm going to draw it on this thing. I'm going to cut it, and then uh, I'm going to show you how I do it after that. So uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone through uh, the quick process of measuring it out and stuff. You can kind of see on my uh, on my piece there. Uh, the lines that I drew here. So I've also cut those lines out and you want to leave obviously the center piece where you don't want to have any paint or anything else on there. Um, just part of the measuring thing, the tip that I'm going to give you um, is the fact that um, some guys will cut these perfectly square. We cut them on the CNC so they should be square with a rectangular but they have square angles, 90 degrees. So then um, what guys will want to do is put a, a maybe a square on the edge and then draw their line and do all that stuff. I strongly suggest you not doing that. I strongly suggest you using freehand and measure as best as you can, just in case your monitor is tilted one way or the other. If you're if you're if you're a perfectionist uh, like we are, you will get it square every time. But this out of the whole kit, out of everything we do on on the bar tops for sure. This is the only thing that you kind of freehand uh, to make sure um, that you get it right. And the only reason why we do that is to make it kind of more of a universal fit instead of forcing our customers to have to buy our monitors and stuff. Yeah, they're great for ease of use and stuff, but I know there's also a cost factor. I mean, these monitors go for anywhere between 200 and 250 bucks Canadian new. And some guys are just trying to do it on the cheap. And, and I understand that they, they have a monitor kicking around that they want to use. So. Um, basically what you're going to want to do is push that monitor up with the Malenko mount to the same angle that we got there, fit the marquee in there uh, where you want, then mount that, get that Malenko mount bolted in where, where you want it so it's pressure fit on the thing here or the back of the console is holding it up so that it doesn't slide down into the machine. Um, and then you're going to measure your lines to the inside of the bezel of your uh, monitor, so only the monitor is showing when you're done. So, with that being said, I'm going to peel this bad boy off to show you how it goes. Now, the paint that I use on this is kind of like a plastic enamel. I use, it's like a rust-oleum. Uh, it takes anywhere from four to six hours to dry. So I'm not going to be able to show you a finished look uh, in this video, uh, but I'll show you every step that I do in between. So, um, get rid of that. I take Scotch Brite, 
Uh, you can get this at any Home Depot or whatever. It's an abrasive pad. If you really want to use sandpaper, you can, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't use anything uh, with more of a grit than 600 uh, or less, so I wouldn't go less than 600. But basically, you just give it a rough kind of once over on the edges, fog it up just a bit so you can see the scratches. You want it to turn kind of light white. Obviously, you don't want to press too, too hard around the corners and stuff. You don't want to flip your edges up and stuff on this uh, protective coating or protective sheet on top. Because once it comes off, it's not going to stick anymore. And if you uh, peel any of that stuff, um, when you go to paint it, it'll just seep underneath. And then you'll get kind of a gross finish on there. It won't look very nice. Uh, make sure that uh, the side that you're going to be painting it uh, doesn't have any holes, scratches, or anything like that in the protective film because after you paint it, when you peel it off, obviously it's going to be there. So just cover it up with any tape or whatever. So at this point, what I do is I normally take uh, just just water and a, and a paper towel or a rag or whatever, and I'll wipe off all the dust that I just created. I'll take it all off because this stuff is very staticky, so stuff likes to stick to it. So if you use a damp cloth, that's great. Then you wait for it to dry, and then you paint it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go paint this right now and do that, and then I'll bring it back and I'll show you uh, what I've done, and it'll give you kind of an idea of the way it's going to look. Uh, just make sure when you've done all that before you paint it, maybe you want to put some arrows, which is which way is up, which way is down. I don't really have to do that on mine because I can see the difference in size on the top, but if you're dead center, um, the reason why I say uh, up and down is because when you measure this, if your monitor is off from one side to the other by an eighth of an inch, if you measure it here and then you draw it on this side, you have to remember that this thing's going on backwards, right? So you kind of have to go like that and then put it on. So uh, if your side over here is an inch and a quarter and this side's an inch and an eighth, um, you're going to want to do an inch and an eighth on that's on the opposite side, an inch and a quarter on the other one, because when you flip it over, it's it's you're kind of turning it around and flipping it over. So just make that keep that in mind and pay attention to that when you're doing it, so you don't have to do it twice, because we only give you one piece of plexi, and to go pick this up locally, you're going to pay any between twenty and forty bucks uh, for a plastic place to cut you one of these. So uh, um, yeah, just be be cautious with that. I'm going to go paint this. We'll be right back and I'll uh, show you how that's done. Okay, so I've painted this and it's probably been on here for about three minutes before I brought it out so it is really wet. Um, the paint that I chose to use on this one uh, is like a Rust-Oleum Universal. It's a high gloss. You can go with a matte or a, a satin finish, whatever you want. Um, the, the only other one that I would recommend using is this uh, Krylon Fusion. Uh, both of these, uh, this one I believe I get at Rona, this one I get at uh, um, Home Depot so I'm not sure in the States if this one's actually available or not at Home Depot but this one seems to dry a lot faster it's just a little bit weaker so where I was talking before about covering your points for scratches and stuff um, this this tends to leave possible scratches a little bit more uh, this paint here actually not only adheres to the plastic it melts it kind of melts to it so uh, it takes about four to six hours to dry enough to even bother putting it on the machine um, with this I'll leave this overnight before I actually peel it and put it on there and stuff so the way we've done it right now um, I've sprayed it all don't worry if you get a little bit of dust or crackles like well you won't get crackles but if you get any dust or garbage or whatever you can see I've got a little spot there that's not a big deal do not mess with it ever after you've done what you've done with it um, if you take either of these paints or anything that's a plastic paint and say you can't like you can kind of see through it you can shine it up to the light and see it if you're gonna have to make any touch-ups you want to make sure that you do it while it's wet if it dries and you hit this paint with it the next day it will crackle and it'll just wreck the whole thing so um, be sure to just get it done and do it right the first time if you've got a bunch of dust or anything on any of that stuff don't worry about it it's gonna be behind it won't show through the front uh, you're gonna get an excellent beautiful glass looking finish on the other side from the paint as long as you don't have any holes or whatever or have lifted the edges like I kind of mentioned before so just do nice clean cuts make sure you're good to go and then once you peel this off you'll be able to put it in and slide it off obviously you're gonna want to take protective coating off of your monitor and stuff like that give it all a good wipe down 
and uh, you should be good to go. So I'm hoping this video helped you out a little bit. I truly apologize for not being able to show you the end product. By the time this dries, the camera will be long gone. Uh, I can post some pictures possibly, or if you have any questions or whatever, let me know. Uh, I'll probably show up, uh, I'll post a picture of this machine finished at the end so you can kind of see what the bezel looks like. And, uh, well, if you like the theme, then you can kind of check it out and go from there. But uh, thanks for uh, joining us, and uh, like I said, I hope it helps. Thanks.